So here is the box pack of the newly released DDPi N1 dual channel dash camera. So DDPi has made a really large box this time and they have made sure that the customers feel they are getting a very premium dash cam. So at front you have the pictures of the dash cam, the front dash cam and the rear dash cam and they have specifically said that the DDPi app is available on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store as well. And here you have the branding that is N1 dual. So at first the packaging does look very premium. So initially you get this small file size box and in this you get two electrostatic stickers, one for the front camera and one for the rear camera. So let's keep this aside and along with that you do get a user guide for the N1 dual channel dash cam. So here is the N1 dash camera by DDPi. By the first looks of it, I think this looks and feels very premium compared to all the other budget dash cameras that are out there. Most of the cameras in this segment, I think feel a bit plasticky, but this dash camera has a different appeal and a different feel when you're actually holding it. So let's keep the camera aside now and take a look at what else is inside the box. So you have this detachable mount for the dash cam and I think it's a good choice by DDPi because having a detachable mount is very helpful whenever you are in a situation you want to take out the dash cam. So you can see there is a mounting hole on top of the dash cam here. So here is where the adapter of the mount plugs in. So you just need to press it inside the dash cam and slide it into place and it fits snugly inside. So this is the dash cam along with its mounting module. So let's keep this here and take a look at what else is inside. So here is a type A to type C power cable. Now most of the dash cams these days are coming with a type C cable and that's a good thing. So here it is the DDPi car charger or car adapter which has two dedicated USB ports. So this is the rear dash camera which I think supports 1080p that is full HD resolution. Let me just remove the lens cover. So here it is. So it has a specific connector cable attached to it and a 3M sticker to adapt onto the windshield. There is also a LED indicator at the back and this dash camera can more or less rotate to about 360 degrees. Although the rotating mechanism I must say is not very smooth, you will have to put in some force in order to rotate this. So let's keep the dash cam here. Then you have the rear camera power cable. So you have this 3.5mm connector at one end and at the other end you have the rear camera connecting port. So you have this extra 3M stickers just in case if you require them in order to change the location of the dash cam. So these are all the things inside the box. You get two electrostatic stickers, you get a user guide, the dash camera, the power cable, the rear camera with its connecting power cable. You have this 12 volt car adapter, the rear camera, power cable and two extra 3M stickers. So this is the N1 dash camera by DDPi. So at front you have the DDPi logo and on the right you have the lens. And here on top you have the mounting adapter for the windshield which is easily removable if you slide it out. So just slide it towards the right and you can easily detach it. Once you put it back, slide it towards the left, it's stuck onto the dash cam back again. So you have this screw here in order to tighten or loosen the grip on the dash camera. So that's about it. On the left side you have the speaker grill. On the back you have some ventilation holes and there is a working indicator LED at the back. On the right you have this rubber lid on which the micro SD card name is etched on top. So here as you can see is the micro SD card slot and a reset slot also is provided in there. So at front you also have a parking monitoring LED present. At the bottom again there are ventilation holes and there is a mic slot also present here. So one thing to note is that since this attaching mount is rotatable, you can rotate it towards the front, tighten the screw and place the dash camera in a position such that it adapts to even vertical windshields. So if I take this file cover as a, an example for a vertical windshield and if I just keep it here, so as you can see, there is a sufficient gap between the lens of the camera and the vertical windshield. So this means this camera can adapt onto vertical windshields such as thars or jeeps. So now let's take a look at some of the features of this dash camera. Starting with the most important point that is the price. This camera comes at a price of 699 rupees, which is 7000 rupees. The front camera has a resolution of 2304 x 1296p at 30 frames per second. The rear camera has a resolution of 1920 x 1080 at 25 frames per second. This camera supports H.265 encoding and it also has a lens of f1.8 aperture. The field of view of the front camera is 135 degrees and the field of view of the rear camera is 125 degrees. 
This camera does not have a built-in battery and supports a super capacitor. It also supports parking monitoring with three different modes. The first is the ordinary recording mode at 30 frames per second, followed by the time-lapse mode at 1 frame per second, and finally the event detection mode, which detects jerks or shocks based on the G sensor. Do note that the parking monitoring requires an additional purchase of a hardware kit. This dash camera also supports a CPL filter, which again needs to be purchased separately. This camera also supports micro SD cards up to 256 GB. It has a built-in 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and a DDPi app support. Coming to the night footage from the DDPi N1 dual channel, as you can see, the front camera offers a 1296p resolution at 30 frames per second, and the rear camera offers a 1080p resolution at 25 frames per second. But in the rear camera, you might observe a bit of glare here and there. In the front camera, you absolutely see no glare, and that's a very good thing. Overall, the video quality, as I said, is decent and gives you value for money. The brightness, contrast, and saturation levels are also more or less right on point. So coming to the daytime footage from the N1 dash cam, the front camera and the rear camera offer two different tones of videos. The front camera offers a cool tone to the video with a slightly higher exposure and contrast levels. The rear camera offers a warm tone along with punchy colors. So at the price of 7000, this is a very decent footage to get and you're not going to be missing out any events that are happening in front and in the rear of the car. This being a 1080p dash cam, you might even get to read some number plates at a very close range. Starting with the nighttime footage from the front dash camera. So as you can see, the front dash camera gives you a resolution of 2304 into 1296p at 30 frames per second. The bitrate of the video is around 16,000 kbps and a 1 minute file size from the front camera will take about 119 MB on your micro SD card. The overall night footage is decent. It has a significantly lesser amount of glare than expected, slightly lesser saturation but overall you get a clear picture of the entire incidents or the entire events that are happening in front of the dash camera. So now let's take a look at the license plate readability of the front dash camera in night conditions. It only has a slightly higher amount of pixels than a full HD dash camera. So if we take a look at the license plate in front of the car, let's zoom in. So as you can see, the license plate is whitewashed with the glare of my headlights falling directly on it. So you won't be able to practically read any number plates at night, especially if your headlights are falling on the license plates. Now let's take a look at a daytime sample of the front dash camera. Well, I think in the daytime, the camera exhibits a slightly warmer tone compared to the rear camera. And also there is a slightly lesser saturation compared to the rear camera as well. If we take a look at the license plate read at about a distance of 10 feet. Now this is an excellent read of a license plate, although you might say there is a bit of a noise here and there, but overall you can read the number plate really well. If we take a look at the license plate read at a distance of about 20 feet. Now again, this gives you a painted appearance, but you can still read the numbers and the letters and that's what's going to make the difference. Now, if we take a look at the license plate at even farther distance of about 30 feet, I think. And if we go ahead and zoom in on the plate of the Jeep, which is going in front. So here is a sample, again, a very painted appearance, but still you can make out the plate and that's a very good thing. Now, also an important point to note is that if I go ahead and zoom in on a vehicle, which is pretty much next to the car, which I'm showing, you cannot read any number plate in this condition. So what went wrong? Because I'm just going to show you that both these are in the same plane of reference and not one is further than the other. So this means that the license plate reads not only depends on the distance, but also depends on the surface area of the plate where you're trying to zoom in. So overall, the daytime footage, as I said, is having a warmer tone, slightly lesser contrast and a slightly lesser saturation. But again, this is a budget dash camera and you can't be expecting more than this. It has already given a very good performance in terms of license plate read. If you take a look at the rear camera, now this exhibits a 1920 into 1080p that is full HD resolution at 25 frames per second. It has a bit rate of about 5000 kbps and a file size of 1 minute will take about 37 MB of storage on your micro SD card. You might see a glare of the headlights, but I think considerably it is lesser compared to many of the other dash cameras, rear cameras where I have seen where the footage is completely whitewashed with the glare. Taking a look at the daytime footage from the rear camera and if we zoom in on the vehicle about a distance of 10 to 15 feet, 
Now this is a good read of license plate. I may not say it's very excellent, but hey, it's still doing the job and it's coming at a budget price. So no complaints there. Overall, again, the daytime footage from the rear camera, I think is slightly punchy in terms of saturation and also a bit more sharpness compared to what we saw in the front dash camera. So overall, you're getting a decent footage from the rear camera. All events are going to be captured really well and you're not going to be missing out on any of the major action happening behind your car. So based on what I've seen, this camera is doing its job pretty well. Also a bit here and there in terms of color saturation and color tones, but overall it's doing a pretty decent job. So here are the three dash cameras which you have been looking for. And here on the left you have the next Digitron A3 Pro. On the right have the DDPi N1 dual channel. So this is the front version. And finally, the new contender, the next Digitron Prime. So all three dash cameras, I have them with me right now. So straight away, as you can see, the next Digitron A3 Pro and the DDPi N1 Dual have more or less a similar form factor, wherein the next Digitron A3 Pro has a complete rectangular shape. In case of the DDPi N1, it has a sort of a curve at both the edges, which gives it a more premium feel. And also in terms of the build quality, I definitely think the DDPi N1 feels a bit more premium in the hand compared to the A3 Pro. And in terms of the next Digitron Prime, again, this feels a bit plasticky compared to the DDPi N1. But overall, I think both the next Digitron A3 Pro and the next Digitron Prime have a similar build. But the DDPi N1 has a slightly better build quality compared to these two dash cameras is what I feel. Taking a look at different sides of the dash camera, so if you can see right now, on the left side of the Prime, you have the power on off button and you have the micro SD card slot. On the left side of the N1 Dual, there is a speaker grill and a similarly placed speaker grill for the A3 Pro as well. Taking a look at the right side, so turning the dash cam. So here, as you can see, both the A3 Pro and the N1 Dual get a lid for the micro SD card slot and the reset slot. Here on the A3 Prime, there is no lid as such. You have direct access and there is a USB Type-C power port and the AV in for the rear port. So where's the rear port for the N1 Dual you might ask? So the rear port for the N1 Dual lies on top of the camera. So the Type-C power port for the front and the AV in port for the rear camera lies on top of the dash cam. You also get some parking LEDs at the front for the A3 Pro and the DDPi N1 Dual. So I think this is the LED on the left side corner here and there's the LED here. There is no parking LED as such for the next Digitron Prime. You only get a LED at the back, which indicates that it's working. At the bottom, we have this broad base for the Prime with all the ventilation holes. Considering the bottom part, I think if you combine these two dash cameras, you get the width as much as the Prime, combining the A3 Pro and the DDPi N1 Dual. So in terms of the broadness, the Prime is definitely a very broad dash camera. And considering the length, it's slightly longer compared to both the a3 Pro and the DDPi N1 Dual. So coming to the most important point that is the price, the next Digitron A3 Pro comes at a price of 3899 rupees. The next Digitron Prime comes at a price of 7999 rupees and the DDPi N1 Dual comes at a price of 6499 rupees. The most prominent and the most important difference between these three dash cameras is that the next Digitron Prime has a GPS support but the next Digitron A3 Pro and the DDPi N1 do not support GPS. Another aspect where there is a difference which might matter to you is that the next Digitron A3 Pro and the next Digitron Prime both support memory cards up to 128 GB, whereas the DDPi N1 Dual supports memory cards up to 256 GB. The other important area which might matter to you is the resolution of these cameras. The next Digitron A3 Pro and the DDPi N1 Dual both support a 1296p resolution whereas the next Digitron Prime has a 1440p resolution. Now let's take a look at the video samples and the license plate readability of these three dash cameras. So taking a look at the video samples of all three dash cameras side by side, on top you see the next Digitron A3 Pro, in the middle you have the DDPi N1 Dual and at the bottom you find the next Digitron Prime. I have given all the detailed technical specifications of these videos on the right side. So straight away let's jump in into the license plate readability at a very close range and take a look which of these cameras performs the best.
So here are the license plate samples. Now you can make out that almost all the three samples are exactly the same. Well, there's not a major difference. There's not a drastic difference between the video samples in terms of reading the number plates. I mean the clarity and the legibility of each letter and number is more or less exactly the same. The only thing you can make out is that the sample from the DDPi N1 Dual looks more yellowish than normal and the sample of the A3 Pro and the next Digitron Prime look more or less the same in terms of color tone and in terms of clarity. Now continuing on to the footage and waiting till the bus moves a bit about 20 feet away from my car and jumping into the license plate readability again. Now at a far range as you can see now the clarity has come down. The image has started to get blurred and the letters and numbers they are slightly difficult to read now but again in comparison the n1 dual sample looks more yellowish because the video has a sort of a warmer tone and the sample from the a3 pro and the prime looks pretty much similar in terms of the clarity i can say that the a3 pro and the n1 dual have a sharper footage and because of that the license plate read also looks a bit more sharper and the letters and the numbers look more straightened up. In terms of the next digital prime, it has a slightly overexposed video footage with lesser amount of sharpness and because of this you find a smoothed out license plate readability and in comparison in this particular sample, the license plate readability of the prime offers a slight better improvement in terms of clarity compared to the other two dash cameras. Coming to the nighttime comparison of the video footages from all three dash cameras, a similar experience, you see a slight yellow tone on the N1 Dual. The A3 Pro gives the best video footage in terms of having a perfectly balanced exposure and contrast levels. The next Digitron Prime also gives a very decent footage, although I must say it is slightly overexposed and you'd see a slight white tint on the particular video. Now let's zoom in and let's wait until I get a bit close to the car right in front of me to get a good license plate read. Now about a distance of I think this is 10 feet if we take a look at the license plate abilities of all three cameras. So as you can see the comparison at a distance of 10 feet especially when the headlights of my car are hitting the license plates directly. You can clearly make out that the N1 Dual and the Nexustron Prime license plate reads are whitewashed because they are in line with the direct glare of my headlight. But surprisingly the A3 Pro turns out to be a winner in this because it is able to compensate for that extra glare and still give you a good license plate read. Now, what I have shown in my previous videos regarding the next restaurant prime giving you a whitewash look, even in this example, the result is pretty consistent with that. But here's the trick. If you get a bit more closer when the license plate is not directly in range of my headlights and lies slightly at the border of it, and if we take a look at the license plate, so as you can see now, you can make out the license plate from all the three cameras, especially when the license plate is not directly in range of the headlight. Now, even in this example, I think the A3 Pro gives a better license plate read. You can even make out the individual I and D lettering at the left corner of the plate. In terms of the clarity of the N1 Dual and the Prime, the N1 Dual carries a bit more noise compared to the other dash cameras. And the Prime gives you a very soft image and a lightly overexposed image compared to the A3 Pro and the N1 Dual. So this again is consistent with what I have shown you in my previous videos of the next Digitron Prime and the DDPi N1 Dual that their license plate readabilities at night are good when the license plate is not lying directly in line of the headlights. Now overall footage quality again does seem pretty decent to me at night you will get a good quality of all these three dash cameras, a decent quality while taking video footages at night. Coming to the rear camera quality, now it's only the competition between the N1 Dual and the Nexus Drone Prime because the A3 Pro doesn't have a rear camera. You can straight away make out that the N1 Dual gives you a more yellowish video because of its warmer tone and the Nexus Drone Prime gives you a more natural looking video in comparison because it has a more cooler tone when compared to the N1 Dual. Now let's jump in into the license plate read. Now as you can see uh, Mahindra Bolero is very close to me and there is a school bus right next to it which is slightly farther away. Let's take a look at the license plate read of both these vehicles. So at a close range as you can see in terms of reading the license plate of the Bolero 
both the images are pretty much the same in terms of clarity you can make out that the only difference comes in the color tone wherein the n1 dual gives you a yellowish footage and the next return prime gives you a more cooler slightly bluish footage the letters and numbers are more or less the same in terms of the clarity and you can read the number plate at a very close range of about 5 to 10 feet taking a look at the license plate of the school bus which was slightly farther away i think more than 10 feet away you can again make out that the n1 dual has a more yellowish tone and the prime gives you a more natural tone in terms of the letters and numbers you can make out the number plate and in terms of their clarity i think both license plate reads are exactly the same i cannot say for sure like one camera is doing its job better than the other in terms of clarity they are exactly the same and since both cameras are 1080p cameras so they are giving a very consistent and a equal result coming to the night footage i think the extratron prime is giving a slight white look at the video because of its overexposure and the n1 dual is giving you a more contrasty look taking a look at the license plate read at a moderate range now as you can see there is a duster standing right behind my car if we zoom in on the license plate the n1 dual giving you a slightly sharper and a warmer look the next digitron prime 2 is giving you a good read of the license plate although in comparison it is looking less contrasty and less sharpness it gives you a more smooth route and a slightly overexposed image now again this is not a huge difference this is a very very minor difference this is not something which you will notice unless you compare the license plate reads side by side as i am showing in the video in real life terms this is not going to make a major difference now i've put in front of you all the information about all of these dash cameras and put them in a comparison manner but if you still want to check out in detail about any of these three dash cameras I have made specific videos on each of these dash cameras and all the links to those specific videos will be provided in the description below you can go ahead and check out those individual videos as well also if you are interested in purchasing any of these three dash cameras the links to purchase them are also given in the description below so tell me how helpful this video has been to you in making the right choice and in spite of this detailed video, if you still have any concerns, if you still have any queries, you can of course write that down in the comments and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. So reminding you once back again, this video has took a lot of effort, planning, hard work to bring in front of you. I hope you recognize that effort. And if you do, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now and smash that like button to show that you support and like my work it would mean a lot to me. Many more interesting and amazing videos are coming up in the future. Make sure you do not miss those. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.